There's a man at the end of the Princeton bench, once one of the top post players in the Ivy League, now a fifth-year senior who for the second straight year has been relegated to watching the Tigers make a run toward the postseason. I'd never really been injured before really any, any serious injury at all, so being out for an entire year was tough. Um, and especially coming back to a, a team that had so much success without me playing. Last year, Brace tore the ACL in his right knee two weeks before the season opener. Even though he couldn't play, he stuck around. This past fall, Brace was back. Back on the court, back in the starting lineup when history repeated itself. Oddly enough, the VCU game, I felt great. The first few minutes, I really felt like I finally clicked, finally was working well with the teammates, gelling well. Um, was making some shots, was playing well overall, um, and then things went, went south from there. Five emphatic points for Deriante Jenkins, and now Malali Cox with the steal. Nine turnovers. And the slam. And someone's down for Princeton. And he had a serious knee injury last year, and he's reaching for his right knee. So right knee injury, that is not a good sign for him. No, and he's in a lot of pain, too. Kind of immediately, you're your mind starts flashing back to, to the past injury, what had just happened, what it felt like the first time, kind of the, the year of rehab, everything they had done, just everything just flashes right before you. The first thing that went through my mind was probably the same thing that went through everyone's mind, like not again. What I think was really maybe ironic or unfortunate about the timing of it was that, you know, we had gotten off to a 16-0 start in that game at VCU. Hans was playing great. I think he had seven points, three rebounds, was three for three. Was the Hans brace that we all knew um, and we all expected to see. So both were the same injury. They were both uh, ACL tears in my right knee. Um, luckily, they were only ACL tears, no meniscus, no any other ligament damage, which is, which is good in, in the long run. Sidelined for the second straight year, Hans stuck around. The guys jokingly call me uh, an old man or grandpa. Um, because I am, I'm kind of the oldest on the team. I really just try to use what I've, what I've seen over the past few years, just trying to, I don't know, let people know what, what I see out there. Um, I talk to the coaches a lot. I try to help out the, the younger guys especially. One thing about basketball is uh, you're very similar on the court to how you are off the court, and uh, I think that goes for Hans. Um, and he's definitely one of the most selfless individuals I've ever been around. Always investing in the guys on the side of the court despite not being able to play, not being recognized. He traveled to all the, the, almost all the road games on his own. He talks about this being a family to him, um, and, and you feel it from him every day. His spirits are unbelievable. His ability to have it happen twice, well, not just once, but twice, and still be at every practice, be a part of the team, be encouraging teammates, um, rather than just kind of sulk and be, you know, inward and kind of frustrated with what's going on. He's very open with everyone. He's an unbelievable leader on this team, and we wouldn't be where we are without him, whether it's on the court or off the court. And despite injuries in back-to-back -back seasons, the 6'9 forward from South Carolina plans to play again. I'm looking to play until I can't play anymore, so I'm, I'm getting ready, um, trying to get my body healthy, and then make a return eventually when, when my body is fully healthy. I will graduate here in the spring and then I have one year left of eligibility. Um, so I'll go somewhere else um, for a year of uh, graduate um, studies and, and play there for a year of college. I mean, the toughest part is not being out there. I mean, after sitting out for an entire year, the one thing I really can't wait to do again is play. All the intangibles and the things that he's always brought to us off the court never wavered for one second. He didn't, he didn't feel bad for himself. He didn't internalize everything. I mean, he was um, the ultimate team player from the second it happened. It could have been easy for him to kind of take a back seat, but I don't think he's done that at all. For myself, coming out of the game and, you know, going down, shaking everybody's hand to the end of the bench and then having him just say, you know, keep shooting, you know, keep working. It's just great to, you know, have someone that's given so much quite clearly to the program. You know, that's just the kind of guy Hans is. Uh, I mean, he's the ultimate teammate, the ultimate friend for him to still stick around the team and uh, contribute and in, in, in still any way he can. Uh, I think that's one of the most selfless acts, uh, you know, I've witnessed as a person. I think it uh, really speaks volumes about the kind of character and the kind of person Hans is. I love these guys. That's why I decided to come back for 
for an unconventional fifth year. Um, that's why I decided to spend so much time around these guys, even though I knew I wouldn't play. You couldn't even ask someone to do what he's done for us now two years in a row. And um, it's tough to even talk about because he means so much to us and to see him sacrifice so much individually for the team is, is incredible. For the Ivy League Digital Network, I'm Cody Cruschelli.